Welcome to another informative video brought to you by Ortruo. The last time we look at the history of electricity and electromagnetism in brief. The contributions of the early scientists were discussed in detail which span from 600 BC to the 1800th century. In today's series, we will be looking at the types of electric machines we have in an industrial setting. The applications of these machines will be discussed in detail. Stay tuned. Now that we have known some bit of history, which is how electricity and electromagnetism came to be. For this series, we will be looking at the latter, because electric machines mostly work on the principle of electromagnetic inductions. This is going to be the foundation of this series. Again let look at some of the research work which was done by the early scientist on electromagnetism. André Ampère, who is a native from France carry out some research works on electromagnetism. He was credited to have discovered the relationship between the magnetic field and the applied current. Further on, Lenz discovered the direction of induced voltage in a coil. That is, the total flux linking the coil times the number of the coil's turn. This discovery was very handy. Now this is where it start getting interesting. Hendrik Lorentz is a Dutch physicist. He was credited to have gave the foundation for electric generator and electric motors. He discovered that, whenever there is a current carrying conductor in a magnetic field, that current carrying conductor will experience a magnetic force. That is, the electromagnetic force and the force experienced by the conductor will be proportional to the flux density, the current and the length of the wire in the magnetic field. So what this simply means is that, when current carrying conductor is brought in a magnetic field, the conductor will either be attracted to the magnetic poles, or it is repel off from the poles. This attraction and repulsion depends on the polarity of the flowing current. This explained the rotational torque that occurs in an electric machines. In 1883, Nikola Tesla constructed the first induction motor in Strasbourg, France. It was in Strasbourg that he built the first induction motor and he saw it run. After which, everything else they say is history. Perfect Alex. Nice bit of history. Overall, electron is known to occur at random with no direction. However, when the material is brought into a magnetic field, and if there is a relative movement between magnetic field and copper coil, then the induced magnetic field will cause the electron to move in a common direction. That is known as electrical generator. As for electric motor, if a current carrying conductor is brought to a magnetic field, then the magnetic flux which is the imaginary line that Ampere is talking about here will react with the current carrying conductor, and a mechanical motion will be formed. Perfect. Perfect Alex. Lens experiment is also used these days. With this, the direction of the electric motor can be known during terminal connections. Perfect. So basically, electric machines are divided into two and special motors. Now let's look at the two classifications of electric machines that we have in the market today. This are AC machine and DC machine respectively. So we will be starting off by looking at the AC machine. AC machine are further divided into two which are synchronous and asynchronous motors. Asynchronous motors on the other hand can also be known as induction motors. Now let us look at the synchronous motor. In a synchronous motor, the rotor rotates at the same speed as the rotating field from the stator. This field is generated via the stator windings. So in other words, 
the rotor rotates synchronously with the magnetic field of the stator. Synchronous motors can also be subdivided into three different types which are reluctance motors, permanent magnet synchronous motors and separately excited synchronous motors. So what is a reluctance motor? Reluctance motor is an electric motor that is made up of both the stator and the rotor. Unlike the other motor that we have on the market today, the rotor of this motor has no magnet or windings. The stator consists of protruding, salient pole and a wire which is wound around these protrusions. The rotor on the other hand is created using ferromagnetic metal and contains its own poles. During operations, the rotor tends to follow the contours of the stator's magnetic field, either with protrusions or air gaps or notches. When a rotor's salient pole lines up with the stator's salient pole, it is said that the rotor is in the minimum reluctance position that is, the amount of magnetic resistance is lowest at this point, and is fully aligned. When a stator pole lines up with the notches of the rotor, it is said that the rotor is in the maximum reluctance position, or fully unaligned. So in a nutshell, what this means is that, naturally, the rotor poles always tend to line up with stator poles. But when the coil on the protruding pole is energized, the rotor will experience a torque which causes the rotor to move to the notch. However, because the rotor tend to align itself with the stator pole. It will not stop here. Instead it will tend to move to the next poles. So basically, the rotor will continue to move. Again, the space between the rotor and stator is known as air gap. Perfect Alex. Again the air gap you mentioned earlier which is the spacing between the rotor and stator. This gap should not be more than 0.8 mm. Otherwise, the torque that will be induced on the rotor will not be effective. The reluctance motor comes in two lamination forms, which are axial and radial rotors. According to Valeria Rabovkova's research, the axial rotor which is the rotor with narrow paths tends to perform better than the other radial design. On the other hand, permanent magnet synchronous motors, or PMSM as it is fondly called, are further differentiated as IPMSM and SPMSM. One thing worth noting is that the stator design of IPMSM and SPMSM are similar. However, the rotor design differs from each other. In an SPMSM, the magnets are attached to the outside of the rotor surface. And as such, the S stands for the surface. So basically, so the motor can now be known as a surface permanent magnet synchronous motor. However, in the IPMSM, the rotor design differs. The magnet of this type is embedded in the rotor. And hence, IPMSM can also be known as an interior permanent magnet synchronous motor. Overall, permanent magnet synchronous motors are known to be very efficient and they are also characterized by a high power density. This feature is due to the magnets in the rotor. The only drawback is that permanent magnet synchronous motors are very expensive when compared to other similar electric motors. From what I could see, this motor will have a higher power density, which is due to rotor construction. So when the motor is put on external load, it will be very easy for a reluctance motor to drop out of synchronization but for this motor here, it will take a load that is closer or above the motor rating before it will slip out of synchronization. Perfect. In an SPMSM, the magnets are attached to the outside of the rotor surface. And as such, the S stands for the surface. So basically, 
so the motor can now be known as a surface permanent magnet synchronous motor. Another type of synchronous we have in the market today, is the externally excited or electrical excited synchronous motor. In this type of motor, instead of magnets, the rotor of the externally excited synchronous motors is usually embedded with wound coils. The coil in the rotor will generate a magnetic field. The field generated depends on the current flowing in the coils. The rotor coil is connected to a DC source through its slip ring. So when the rotor coil is energized, it will make the rotor to behave like a magnet. The main disadvantage of externally excited synchronous motors are the slip rings, which transmit a DC current to the rotating rotor. The biggest advantages of this type of electric motor is the strength of the magnetic field which can be adjusted over a DC current. With this motor comes with some flexibilities. Nice and perfect. In the next series, we will be looking at asynchronous motor. The way this machine our design will be discussed in detail, coupled with some practical example. Hope you have learned something new today. See you in the next one.